So I got to tell you, I, I just very briefly before we get started this morning, I I work, um, you know, I'm bivocational, so I work during the week, and so I, uh, you know, I'm trying to you know, manage all the different things that I that I manage in my world, just like you are. But Saturday is my Sabbath. Saturday is my day. I oh, just enjoy the presence of the Lord and enjoy being. And I get some of the craziest ideas for messages <laughs> while I'm relaxed. Imagine that, right? And so I'm in here like, I don't know, 7, 8 o'clock last night building my door frame. I have Graves the Gardens on repeat playing it just as loud as that little blue JBL speaker will play it. I'm surprised I didn't hear it out on the main road. And I just had the best time in the presence of the Lord just building a door frame. So I'm really stubborn. Those of you who are Getting to know me are uh, probably learning this about me. I'm very stubborn. Um, I, I have been since birth. My dad, oh, my poor parents, they go to the 12 o'clock service here. They're in Arizona. So uh, we call it, the, we always have a, a little fun, uh, my mom and I, and we, uh, we call it the 12 o'clock service. So they'll be with us at 12. And uh, I remember my dad, and he'll remember this too, we were... My dad had a, a business down in Baltimore, and there was a garage, a separate garage, where we would keep cars that we worked on and had fun with. And we were in there, and I was standing at the, right in the door frame. And I don't remember what we were talking about or what caused it. But my dad looked me square in the eye, and he said, Donnie, actually he called me Don. He said, Don, you are so hard-headed, so hard-headed. Jesus himself could come down here and tell you that the sky is blue. And if you believed it was green, then it's green. And that has, that, that, that's pretty accurate. Um, and, and I, when I'm, well, I will say this. Being stubborn and hard-headed does have its benefits. I, I never really caved to peer pressure and those kinds of things. I just didn't. I didn't, I just did what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it and how I wanted to do it. So that part was a good thing of my stubbornness and my, my hard-headedness. And, but, gosh, when you bring that into relationship. It's hard. When you bring it into your marriage, it's hard. It comes out like you're like controlling, right? You just, you're just hard-headed. You're stubborn. You're set. This is how it has to be. And, um, and, and you bring it into friendships. You bring it into church when you're pastoring. I mean, you can just really you can be so destructive when it just has to be your way because your way is right. And what happens to what happens is, is that you, you fall into this trap of it has to be my way or that's it. And you bring that into your relationship with the Father, with God. And let me tell you, there's a lot of struggle. Because I don't know if you realize this or not, but God is smarter than we are. He just is. And yet sometimes I'll find myself knowing what I'm supposed to do in a particular... Like if someone... If someone really hurts me, you know, the Bible says to forgive. In fact, it says to love your enemies. That is not what I want to do at that particular time. And being stubborn and hard-headed, I have a tendency to just push through and then bitterness takes root. You know what I'm saying? It just, you know, being hard-headed and stubborn is just not good in relationship and particularly with God because being obedient to God, obeying Him, as you would your father, or maybe better than you would your father. And, and yeah, I know, I know. Some of you, you're sitting out there right now and you're going, oh my gosh, you don't listen to what other people tell you to do? Are you serious right now? Like somebody tells you to do something in authority and you won't do it? You, you're weighing it? You're, yes. Yes. Because even when I do it, when somebody tells me, now, if you ask me, I will do anything in the world for you. My wife can testify to this. But if you tell me, the very first thing that happens is I start weighing it. A, do I want to do it? B, if I want to do it, is it worth doing? And if those two things line up, then I'll probably do it. But if they don't, sometimes they do it anyway, but I'm, I'm kicking and screaming. And I know some of you are sitting out there going, I just, 
I can't believe you would be like that. Who would be like that? Who would be so hard-headed and so stubborn that it just has to be their way, Donnie? I just don't get it. I, somebody asks me or tells me to do something. I just do it because it's the right thing to do. So if that's you, and you do what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, and, whether, and somebody tells you to do it, and you're like, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, and you take care of it, you get a pass this morning. But here's what I want to ask of you. Would you pray for me? And would you pray for the rest of us that are hard-headed and strong-willed? And, and it's, you know, it's not really, it's really not our fault. It's been ingrained in us since our, when we were children. You know, have you ever, you know, there, there's a story that, um, I'm not leaving, I'm just going to get some water. There's a story of a little boy who's been acting up and his mom says, sit. And he says, no. And she says, sit in the chair for 30 minutes and do not move. And he says, "Uh uh-uh. And so she encourages the young lad to have a seat. And as she's forcing him into the chair, he says, mama, On the outside, I'm sitting, but on the inside, I'm still standing. And that is indicative of those of us who are stubborn and hard-headed when it comes to God. Because he has things that he wants and needs for us to do. We need to be obedient to what the Father is directing us. And it's this... It's this gritting of our teeth where we obey in our mind and we, we subconsciously, we, we, or consciously, we are like, okay, I'm going to do this thing, but you're gritting your teeth because inside you're still standing. What I want to talk to us about this morning and what we're going to look at in Ezekiel, this next part of Ezekiel, is obedience of the heart, not obedience of the mind. Because you can obey in your mind, yes, sure, I got, yeah, yeah, I'll take care, mm-hmm, inside, You are not obedient at all. You are gritting your teeth. Let me give you a couple of examples and we're going to move on. Actually, I'm going to save them. I'm going to save them. Because actually, they'll they'll be, once we dig into Ezekiel, these next few verses, what, what I'm going to share with you will actually make more sense. But here's what I want you to grab as we move forward. Obedience is the door to the miraculous. Obedience is the door to the miraculous. Because what we're talking about over these past few weeks is living, not existing. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of existing. See, I appreciate you all coming. I do. I'm so glad you're here this morning. But quite frankly, this message is for me and I'm glad you get to come along. Because I want to live. I'm tired of just going through the motions and existing. I want to live. I want to get every, every morsel, every ounce that God has for me in the life that he's blessed me with. What does he want me to do? What is the purpose of my life? What, what is it? You know, I'm, I'm halfway through if I'm lucky. A little farther, a little less if I'm not, right? What is it that he wants? Why am I here? And I want to have a passion and a and a and a just a, a desire to live and to do well for him. And that starts with being obedient because I want, listen, I hope you want this too. I want the miraculous power of God in my life. I do. I want to pray for people and see them healed for his glory. I want to be in the grocery store line and him put a, put a message in my heart for the man in front of me, and I'll have enough courage to say, hey, you know what? Could we pray? And then see God do a work in his life. The miraculous, because I know you're sitting there going, that's nuts. Who would even do? You could, get, you could go to jail. <laughs> I get it. But I believe in a miraculous power of our Father. So we're going to pick it up. 
We're going to be in Ezekiel 37. And the reason I bring up stubbornness is this. Some of the things that we're going to dig into this morning, for those of us who are very easy and we just do what we're supposed to do, when we're supposed to do it because it's the right thing to do, this is going to be easy for you. You'll be like, yeah, what's up? Let's go. For the rest of us, <laughs> for the rest of us, we might go, you know, I could do without the miraculous, Donnie. I'll just hang back. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, bro. You just, I'm fine. Ezekiel 37, 7 says this. So I prophesied as I was commanded. So I prophesied as I was commanded. There it is. Four or five words in. That's hard. I was commanded. Do this. Okay. On the inside, I'm still standing. And you've got to think about what Ezekiel is, what God is telling Ezekiel to do. There is a, there is a I mean, just think about this. Think about how bizarre this is. There is a valley of dry bones as far as he can see. How, look out the window. See that? As far as you just, valley of bones, just dry bones. Look over here, over here, as far as you can see. Just bones, dry, dead, right? And then God says, prophesy to the bones, Ezekiel. But before that, he says, can these bones live? And Ezekiel goes, well, honestly, God, I don't know. We talked about this last week. I don't know. It was a very honest answer. It wasn't like yes, absolutely, or no. It was, I don't know. But if they're going to live, only you can make them live. Only you can do it, Father. Only you know. Right? You remember that from last week? God says, prophesy to the bones, son of man. Can you just imagine that? He's looking at these bones. He says, prophesy to what? Like the circumstances you're facing right now. I'm supposed to do what with this mess? I'm supposed to get past this how? What is it that you want me to do, God? This is ridiculous. How can I, what am I even supposed to do? How am I supposed to connect with that person? How am I supposed to, to do the right thing? I don't even know what to do, Father. This is insane. Because Ezekiel said, Father, if it's going to happen, it has to happen by you. And God says, great, I'm going to do it through you. And Ezekiel's like, what? I mean, you just got to, you got to picture that. You got to be there. Knee deep in bones. Prophesy to the bones, son of man. Prophesy. What does that even mean? He says, so I, I prophesied as I was commanded. What do you think he said? Hmm? Prophesy. Well, tomorrow, when you go to work, you're going to... No, that's not what he said. He said, in the name of Yahweh, bone, connect to bone. In the name of I am... Bone, connect to bone. In the name of I am, sinew began to be formed between the bones. And skin began to form over the bones. In the name of Yahweh, in the name of the great I am, the God of all gods, in his name alone, bone began to be put together. Sinew began, skin began, right? That's what he began. And what does it say? As I prophesied, there was... There was a sound, and behold, there was a rattling. God said, prophesy, son of man. And he was obedient. He prophesied, didn't he? Now before that, what happened? Before he prophesied, what happened? Nothing. Nothing. That's why you're quiet. You're like, what? Nothing. Nothing happened. There's nothing happened. The valley of dry bones. God said, prophesy, son of man. And nothing happened until Ezekiel was obedient. And he began to prophesy. Come together. 
in the name of Yahweh. Be knitted together once again like I knitted you together in your mother's womb. Put skin over you. Let me tell you a really little secret. God did not need Ezekiel's help. He didn't need Ezekiel's help. We think that was the only way it could get done? See, that's the miracle. The miracle is that God chose to use Ezekiel. And when Ezekiel stepped through the door of obedience, the miraculous happened. See, he could have gone around. He could have tried to get over. He could, he could, but it wasn't until he walked through and was obedient to the Father and did what the Father said that he heard a rattling. You see, obedience is the door to the miraculous. You want to live a life that's full of passion, that's full of joy, not just existing day to day, but a life that means something to your family, to your friends, to the the people that come in and out of your life, to the lady at the 7-Eleven. You want to live a life of miracles? comes from walking through the door of obedience doing what God says to do and for those of us that are just a wee bit stubborn that's tough and devil likes it that way because until you're willing to walk through the door the miraculous is just something you read about but if you're willing to be obedient and walk through the door and let God do a work in your life and be obedient to what he tells you to do you will see miracles. Let me give you an example. And we're going to go forward, but I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. You have a relationship with a friend that is absolutely decimated. You have no relationship. and In fact, friend is really sort of a loose term. Because they did something extremely hurtful and offensive to you. And so you've held on to that. Even now, when you start to think about their name, you get angry. And your life is just not... I mean, you have moments of happiness. But there's no joy. There's no life. And you know his word. You know what you're supposed to do. There's There's a bitterness in there. So there's a root of unforgiveness in there. God says, you've got to get rid of that. If you read his word, what it says to love others as you love, love your enemies. Forgive as you have been forgiven. That's what his word says. That's being obedient to the Father. So what you are called to do is to go through the door of obedience and pick a phone up and text or send a letter or send an email or make an appointment that you can sit and talk to this person. And the relationship, listen to me, will miraculously be restored. It won't be restored because you say the right thing or do the right thing. It will be restored because you have been obedient to the Father. The Father can reach out and he can restore what the enemy would decimate. And here's the incredible, miraculous thing that happens. You are changed forever. And that root of bitterness is ripped out of your life and all of a sudden there is joy where there was no joy. There is passion where there was no passion. Not because of you. In fact, I would say in spite of you. But because of the obedience and the power of God that comes from being obedient. And that's just one example. It's just one example. Some of us are struggling financially. struggling it's tough some of us are struggling but we don't tithe because it's it takes a tremendous amount of faith and trust to give 10 percent of your income away so you're struggling you're trying to work in multiple jobs you're trying to make ends meet and god says give me what is mine and i will bless you So when you walk through the door of obedience, guess what? Miraculously, miraculously, 90% of your income does what 100% couldn't do. Now, I know what you're thinking. Funds must be getting tight at Hope Chapel. 
if Dave is watching me in Georgia right now, I've been preaching this message for a really long time. Tithing is not about the church you attend. It is about the kingdom of God. What I'm telling you is this. Don't give it here. If you've never tithed in your entire life, give it someplace else. Pick a local church. Pick a local church and and take 10% of your gross income and send it to that church. Because it is not about Hope Chapel. It's not about filling our coffers or any of that. It is about being obedient and stepping through the obedience of God and letting him open up the miraculous. I chased money for 30 years of my life. Got fired. Started, I'll tell you that story sometime. But I got fired and I finally said, I'm either doing this or I'm not doing it. And from that moment forward, God is taking care of our family financially. Give it someplace else. Don't give it here. But be obedient and let God do the miraculous. That's just two examples. I could go on and on and on because it is the miraculous power of God that Ezekiel experienced because he was obedient. Let's look at a little bit more of this. It says there was a rattling and it came together bone to bone. And I looked and behold, there were sinews on them and the flesh had come upon them and the skin had covered them. I just love that picture. Prophesy, son of man. Now? Now. So he begins to prophesy. And there's a rattling. Woo. And then it says he looked and behold. You know what that means? Whoa! Wow, I didn't see that coming. That's Hebrew. (laughs) Behold. Whoa. This is working, man. See, that's what it's like when you walk through. The miraculous starts to happen. You're like, God, this is real. For the first time in my life, God is not just something I go to do on Sunday, but he is real. He is in my life. He is changing and moving things. And all I'm doing is what he told me to do in the first place. It says, I beheld there was skin. Come on. Don't you want to be used like that? But there was no breath in them. There was no breath in them. Have you ever been in a place where you've trusted God? Been obedient? Walked through the door? And it just doesn't go the way you planned. It just, it just doesn't look like you expected it to look. Or You get so far and then it just stops. Life comes at you fast and you weren't expecting it. Been there? There's no breath in them. There's a miracle, but there's no breath. They're not alive yet. It's awesome. It's amazing. But there's no breath. There's no life. When we step through the door of obedience and the miraculous comes, the question is, are we willing to continue to be obedient even when the circumstances don't work exactly the way we expected them to work? Even when we don't expect things to go the way that we expected them to go? Will we continue to be obedient? Will we continue to do what he's called us to do. Because that's where Ezekiel was at. In the name of Yahweh, bone become knitted together, sinew and skin, prophesied. And there they were. But there was no breath in them. I think that's a really valid place. Because initially... When, you're, when you've stepped into obedience and you're doing what the word has asked you to do, let's say you've called that, you've reached out to that person, you're doing what you're supposed to, and they slam the phone down. What then? 
where you ride over and burn their house down. No, I'm just kidding. You, no, you, you got to keep going. you got to keep pushing in. you got to keep seeking. you got to be obedient. You can't stop because look at what it says. This is what Ezekiel did. He says, And I looked, and behold, there was sinew on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, God said to Ezekiel, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breathe, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. And Ezekiel, in verse 10, says, Lord, I've already done what you've asked me to do, and this just isn't working out. So I appreciate the display of your miraculous power, and I appreciate the fact that you now have all of these people laying in this valley and you've put bones together and you've put sinew together and that's really cool but you know what I'm done I'm out I can't take any more of this because this is not what I signed up for you said you were going to make them live and I've done my part and they're not living so thank you very much verse 10 I'm out and he got on his little donkey is that what he did we have verse 10 up there. Read it. So I prophesied. I continued to be obedient. I continued to do. So I prophesied as he commanded me. Right? And the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Now you got to picture that. you got to picture that. you got a valley of dry bones. Bones. Not, not people who have just passed waiting to be revived. You don't understand what I'm, I don't want to be gross here or anything, but we got a pile of dry bones. We got bones that have been there so long that there's nothing holding them together. They've just fallen apart. You got the picture? And Ezekiel begins to prophesy and say, come together, bones, in the name of Yahweh, in the name, and they begin to just incredibly come together. God does an amazing thing. He takes this. And he begins to put them together. But it does, it doesn't, it's not quite done yet. Just like us, right? We do the right thing. And the circumstances either don't change at all or very little or they change in a way that we weren't expecting. God takes us in a completely different direction. And what Ezekiel is saying here is that we must stay the course and continue to obey the Lord even when it's difficult, even when it doesn't look the way that we want it to look, even when our circumstances don't change. We must continue to be obedient because he says, and he said to me, prophesy. So I prophesied, son of man, and say, breathe. Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. I don't know where you are right now. Truly, I don't. I don't know if you're someone who you just kind of do whatever you're told and how you're, how you're supposed to do it, and so you just go through the Bible and you're just perfect and you do your thing and live it out, and that's great. Truly. Or you may be a little bit more like me where I struggle at times. Yes, I'm a pastor. Yes, I love you and I love God. But sometimes, sometimes I struggle. That's why this has been so, so good for me. Because as I'm going through this, what I realize is that God is calling me, calling me to do something that I have to be obedient in. And I believe that you're here this morning because God's doing the same thing with you. I don't know where you are. I don't know what your situation is. 
But I know for sure that there are some of us right now that we are wrestling financially. We are wrestling relationship within our marriages. We're wrestling within our families. We're, we're wrestling within our extended family. It doesn't take a rocket, science to put, rocket scientist to put that stuff together in light of the past year that we've had. Some of you, God is calling to do something ministry-wise. He's calling you to step out, to be obedient, to walk through the door. And see, on this side of the door, it seems impossible. It seems like Ezekiel looking through that, that, that valley of dry bones, it just seemed, I don't know, Lord, if they can live or not. I don't know if I can get through this or not. I don't know how I could possibly do what you're asking me to do. And it wasn't until Ezekiel stepped through the door and he was obedient that God did the miraculous. And you've got to understand that word. I just, he didn't just do it. It wasn't just a one person. It was a valley of dry bones that he made into a great army. And the purpose of this scripture, let's not forget, was a vision of what God was going to do for Israel who had been decimated. And you may be here this morning decimated. This past year has just kicked your teeth in. And you're just not sure what the next step forward is. That's how Israel felt. They were in captivity. Three quarters of them had been completely destroyed. They had no idea how to move forward. And God said, I'm going to I'm going to breathe life where there is death. And I believe God's saying that to you this morning. I'm going to breathe life where there is death. I'm going to do something miraculous. And all you have to do is be obedient. That's it. You have to do what he's asking you to do. If you will step out and you will trust him, He will do the miraculous in your life. I'm going to close with this. Some of my favorite movies when I was a kid was um, Indiana Jones. Remember those? I don't watch The Temple of Doom because it gives me nightmares and I think it's satanic. I'm going to watch that one. But The Last Crusade, that's a good one. I won't spoil it for you if you've been under a rock and never seen it before. But there is a part in the movie that I want to share with you. Indiana's trying to save his dad and he's at this cavern. You know what I'm talking about? There's this ginormous cavern. No way to get across. There's nothing there. It's just thin air. Nothing there. Yet he has to go across. Has to get across. There's, that's how he's going to save his dad. He has to get across. Nothing there. You know, if you've seen the movie, you know what happens. He's... He's reading, he's, he's trying to figure it out. But ultimately, what he has to do is he has to take a step. And it's not until he takes that step that the, the miracle bridge, you know that? And then, remember that moment? If you remember seeing that for the first time? How many of you have seen that movie? Yeah. Remember when he went, you're like, oh, right? Come on, you know you did. You went, oh. oh. I mean, you knew he couldn't die, but there was that moment, you, 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 you know, I say that that's what God is asking of you to this morning. He's asking you to take a step where there just seems like there's nothing there. But miraculously, the bridge will be there when you take the first step. Because he's not going to let you fall. Some of it, it has to do with relationships you need to restore. Some of it is financial. Some of it is uh, ministry that you need to step into that God's calling you to do. Some of it is is, is um, work related. You, just, you, you need to take that step, be obedient, and let God do something miraculous in your life. Let the miracle happen. Prophesy to the bones, son of man. So I prophesy. Would you stand with me this morning?
I had every intention of opening up our altar, if you will, and uh, having asking you know, for you all to come forward if you want a prayer. And, and I had every intention of doing that. And, I, and I, here's, what I, here's what I believe the Lord would say to you this morning. The work that he's doing in you is between you and him. And I know that's a little weird in church because we want to do the altar call and the prayer and, and there's nothing wrong with those things. I love those things. But this morning is very personal. In that valley of dry bones, it was just God and Ezekiel. That's it. Just God and Ezekiel. And so what I'm going to ask is I'm going to, we're just going to take a moment we're going we're to close our eyes and we're just going to take just a few seconds to just be quiet before the Lord and let him speak into your heart what it is, very clearly what it is that he has for you. And then I'm just going to pray a blessing over you. And what I'm going to offer to you is this. As God begins to reveal to you what it is that he has for you to do, I want you to reach out to me privately and let, let me walk through this with you. Let me pastor you. Let me love you. Let me walk through this with you. Okay? Let, let's you and I and the Lord walk through this together. So let's just take a moment. Let's just kind of curl up next to him, if you will. Dear Heavenly Father, some of us need a miracle this morning. Some of us, our circumstances are so out of whack and so overwhelming that we just don't, it's like a valley of dry bones, Lord. We just can't find a way through. Father, I pray that you would, through, the, through your Holy Spirit, communicate to each of us what it is that you have for us to do. That we would be bold and we would take that step. We would be obedient and stop running and stop playing games. We would be obedient and we would step forth into a place that just seems like nothingness. We would step forward, Lord, and we would allow you to be God in our life, the God of miracles, that if we step through the door and be obedient, that your miraculous power will come into our lives and we will live for you. pray a blessing on every family here today, every, every single person here today. I just pray, Lord, that you would bless them, that they would know that they are loved and they are cared for. And I pray, I pray courage into their life to take the next step that you're calling them to do, Lord, that they wouldn't just, this wouldn't just be something they leave here at, at, at 75 Lamb Drive and go about their life on Monday, but Lord, that they would remember, they would remember this moment you began to speak softly into the heart and you said prophesy son of man prophesy I have something for you to do I have something for you to do to take care of your circumstances to take care of the things that are going on in your life prophesy son of man Lord speak that into our hearts give us the courage to act on it for your glory and your honor may it always be for your glory and your honor alone all that we do We love you. We thank you for loving us first. In Jesus' name.